from Los Angeles, it's the Tom Michael Show. Oh, God. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Like is your brought to you in part by The Girl Next Door. It's in theaters this Friday. The Girl Next Door providing $500 cash to a random caller this hour that makes it on the air. That's $500 cashola. From the girl next door, the ultimate guy fantasy starring Alicia Cuthbert from 24 in theaters this Friday. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Appropriately enough, we've taken this story from the Seattle Times. And um, it's regarding uh, something that happened on uh, Monday of this week. On the 10th anniversary of Kurt Cobain's death, Fans gathered at Seattle's Veretta Park to honor the legacy the Nirvana frontman left on the world of music. In the years since Cobain's suicide, fans from around the globe have come to the small park, which is adjacent to his former Lake Washington home, to leave flowers or write messages on an aged wooden bench that serves as a shrine to the singer. Early Monday afternoon, roughly 30 people were at the park for a subdued vigil. Some fans brought lilies and daisies to place on the bench, while others lit candles or sat quietly on the lawn listening to Nirvana's music through headphones. There were no boom boxes blaring tracks from Nevermind or Bleach. A young woman strummed a guitar at the base of the park, while up the grassy hill, two women sang something in the way, barely above a whisper. Overall, it was a quiet coming together of music fans, still mourning the loss of an artist who, like the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, and Elvis Presley, indelibly changed the course of modern music. The sincerity of Cobain's songs, rife with beauty and pain, struck Jenna Beam when she discovered Nirvana through Nevermind in the early 1990s. Beam of Queen Anne and friends Michelle Lunn and Jessica Thornton, also of Seattle, all said it was important to pay their respect. I kind of feel like I have to be there to here today, Thornton said. Kurt's given me so much. I've learned so much about myself and about the world. Really. He's given me so much that I feel the least I can do is come here and celebrate somehow. It was especially meaningful for Lunn, who credits Cobain's music with helping her through the trauma associated with the death of her mother. Through Nirvana and Cobain's songs, Lund said she realized she wasn't alone in her despair. Cobain had his heart on a platter, Lund said. He made himself as vulnerable as he could. Being near where Cobain once lived and sitting on the grass in a park he likely had visited was surreal, Lund said. I'm a little spooked. It almost feels like he's not entirely gone, she said. You certainly feel a presence. You kidding? You kidding, right? 17-year-old Justin Severe arrived in Seattle on Sunday night. Justin was seven when Kurt blew his own brains out. So, of course, this was very meaningful for him. Plans to stay at the park until at least Thursday, the anniversary of the day Cobain's body was discovered. Severe, who lives in Virginia, made the trek to Seattle as part of a cross-country road trip, making it here meaning Seattle. To mark the 10th anniversary of Cobain's death was a priority of the trip, said Severe, who first heard Nirvana when he was about 10 years old. Cobain's voice, alternately aggressive and mournful, is what attracted Severe to Nirvana. No one can scream like him, said Severe. Imagine how much he screamed when he uh, blew his own brains up. Woo-wee! That was loud. Ow! Dressed in a black hooded sweatshirt adorned with Nirvana patches and a large screen print of Cobain on the back. 
Kurt was so passionate about his music. When I think of Kurt Cobain, Severe said, I think of someone who strayed from conformity. He did what he wanted, and he opened up the world to entirely new styles of music. Without Cobain and Nirvana, the music world would be dull, said Paul Levy, who came from Tampa, Florida. The attitude and angst of Nirvana, coupled with vivid storytelling, made the 21-year-old a fast fan of Cobain's music. He made you feel like he was talking to you, Levy said. Though only 11 when Cobain died, Levy said he and his friends could grasp the magnitude of the loss. A talent like Cobain and the impact he made in music only happens once, Levy said, like the Beatles. Wouldn't that be twice? He said it only happens once. Okay. Now, I read this story and I've heard some um, tearful... Uh, Memorials on radio stations about uh, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. And um, I just want to say this. And I know I'm going to be criticized for what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it because I always tell the truth. Kurt Cobain is where he wants to be right now. Far away from you. That's why he took a shotgun and blew his own brains out. There's nothing wonderful to be gained from this. We're talking about a manic depressive, a heroin addict, who put a shotgun to his head and blew his brains out. This is not a role model. This is not somebody to be uh, bringing daisies for. You know, let's take the John Lennon comparison people are trying to make. First of all, John Lennon didn't blow his own brains out. Someone came along and did it for him. To me, that kind of makes a difference. Like, John Lennon wanted to be alive. He wanted to be here. I don't think John Lennon's work was as good when he was shot as it was 10 years before or 15 years before. But you know what? John Lennon didn't volunteer to get his brains blown out. Kurt Cobain did. There's nothing wonderful about this. And why you'd want to turn him into some kind of a martyr or some kind of a victim is beyond me. Kurt Cobain had everything. He had everything, everything he'd worked for, everything he had created for. He had it all. And he was miserable, and he blew his own brains out. Now, I'm not commenting on the quality of Nirvana's music. I like their music. They were good, bad. But in the scheme of things, now that it's 10 years after Kurt Cobain took a shotgun to his head, was that music really as important as some people seem to think it was? In the scheme of things. Nirvana didn't make that many albums. They weren't even around that long as a band. I mean, the Beatles were around ten years. How the, the Beatles had hundreds and hundreds of songs. They put out a double CD of Beatles number one songs. Just number one song. Now, again, they're two different animals from two different decades. But you really can't compare what Nirvana did to what the Beatles did. And by the way, don't think I'm some kind of guy from the 60s who's a big Beatles fan. I am sick to death of the Beatles. I'm sick of hearing about them. I'm sick of talking about them. I'm sick of all the TV specials and all the attention paid to them. You know what? It's done. Done. As far as I'm concerned. So don't think I'm sitting here saying, oh, the Beatles were great and Nirvana was nothing. Absolutely not. Nirvana was very good. Very good. But if you just look at sales of albums, sales of records, level of success, there's no comparison. There's, there is no comparison. And on top of that, none of the Beatles blew their own brains out. Two of them had died. One got shot by somebody else. One had cancer. That's it. You know, for me, I don't care who it is. Anybody who blows their own brains out or, you know, kills themselves with a drug overdose or whatever, you know what? They didn't want to be here with us. They didn't want to create for us anymore. They couldn't take the pressure or the, they couldn't handle it. They went where they wanted to go, away. That's where they went. Jimi Hendrix, same thing. Speaking of Seattle and, and, and rock stars. Jimi Hendrix went where he wanted to go. He followed the syringe. 
Say it. That's where he went. Should we be like a bit mourning his loss? The guy who killed himself, essentially. Kurt Cobain killed himself. These are not heroes. These are people who couldn't take the pressure from people like you, the fans who made them feel like they were under such pressure to create, pressure to perform, pressure to succeed. They couldn't take the pressure from you, and so they killed themselves. You feel good about that? Play. So even though I know we have a lot of friends in Seattle and a lot of people are Kurt Cobain fans, tell me honestly, is the 10th anniversary of the death of Kurt Cobain really a big deal? Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom is a talk master, so you can't get on his radio and say certain things to him because he's going to eat your lives. The Tom Likas Show. I Show 1 800 5800 Tom. Angie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Mr. Likas. How are you? Do you care, Angie? I do, actually. Um, I mean, you really make my day at work really? go so much better. At 3 o'clock, I'm like, uh, time to turn, turn on Tom Likas. I love that. Okay, check this out. I'm calling about the Kurt Cobain thing, right? Yeah. So I think Kurt Cobain, like when I was in high school, I was a huge fan of Nirvana, like huge fan. Mm -hmm. And I was really, really, really upset when he killed himself. But as the years have gone by, I feel like you. Who cares about this guy? I was so appalled this week with all the attention and the press that he's been getting and the papers and the, on TV and you listen to radio stations, rock radio stations, and they're like Nirvana Day all day. He, he had, like you said, he had he made all this money. He worked really hard to to to, to get where he was. Blue his brains out. You know, obviously he didn't care about himself. He didn't care about his family. He especially probably did not care about his daughter. Do I believe that whole conspiracy theory that Courtney Love killed him? Who knows? I don't care. I think in about 10 years, maybe less. I hate to say it, but I really do think that she'll probably be dead too. And as far as the Francis Bean is concerned, she could even I don't think it's going to be 10 years. My opinion? <laughs> I'm saying 10 because I would like to think that maybe... Oh, listen, have that. you heard the latest uh, uh, Courtney Love story? This is great. No, I haven't heard it. Here we go. This is great. Uh, just amazing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me get you the exact uh, paragraphs here. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, she was supposed to appear in Beverly Hills. Right. Uh, at a hearing. Right. On charges of disorderly conduct and being um, under the influence of a controlled substance. Right. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, she was... Um, Arrested October 2nd outside an ex-boyfriend's house. Mm -hmm. Police said she was wandering down the driveway unsteadily and slurring her speech. The singer told officers she lived at the house and was trying to retrieve a compact disc and acknowledged that she'd broken some windows. But her ex-boyfriend declined to press vandalism charges. Right. According to Officer Alonzo Howell, who testified at this hearing, how one of the first officers at the scene said that when he arrived, Love was waving at a police helicopter hovering overhead with its spotlight fixed on her. She was looking up at the sky and she was waving with her hands straight up like waving hello, he said. She had an unsteady gait and she appeared to talk with slow, slurred speech. Howell testified that he thought Love might be under the influence and called for an officer especially trained in recognizing drug use. But Love's attorney, Michael Rosenstein, argued that police officers had no reason to investigate his client for drug use after they decided not to arrest her for uh, vandalism. He argued that although Love acknowledged to officers that she'd taken hillbilly heroin, the street name for OxyContin, they didn't know she was taking it without a prescription. He also said she had a taxi waiting and wasn't going to drive under the influence. And it goes on. Yeah, and since then she's been knocking people out at concerts in New York and allegedly, allegedly, allegedly throwing microphones at people in the audience. Allegedly, allegedly flashing her boobs to passersby on the street. I mean, it's not looking good no. for her kid. No, she's I definitely think... on my Deadpool every year starting next year. Man, start, starting next year, right now. Well, I, you know what? I, I failed to put her on this year. I wish I had because I think she's getting close. Yes, yeah, she is. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Can I request the uh, girl next door five hundred bucks? You know what? You heard the promo. You thought to request it. I'm going to give it to you. Yes. <laughs> well, not a problem, Andrew. Right on. This is unreal. Look at that. She asked me for 500 bucks, and I gave it to her. Well, I didn't give it to her. It came from the girl next door. It's in theaters this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Bruce on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. It's Bruce. I know. I just said that. Cool. Hey, I just wanted to let you know how much I love you, first of all. Thank you. Yeah, I want to call because I'm from Washington, 
And, you know, all day yesterday we had to hear about Kurt Cobain this, Kurt Cobain that, and it makes me sick. It just makes me want to puke. I wish somebody was there with a shotgun to shoot all those people that came to his house. <laughs> you know, what is that I, all about? Was, Get a life. Exactly. This guy, he had everything laid out for him. He had all the money, any woman that he could want, you know, and he blows his brains out. What a loser. And then he married Courtney Love. Jesus. I know. Someone needs to shoot her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand why he blew his own brains out, for Christ's sake. <laughs> to look at that wench every day. Oh. Oh, God. But, uh, I mean, the bottom line here is, you know, what? I'll tell you what, you know, if you guys all uh, revere him so much, how about you all take out a shotgun and uh, follow the leader? <laughs> exactly, Tom. Now, of course, well, not, they don't like him that much. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a bunch of people up here in Seattle just need to kill themselves. So <laughs> I just want to say thanks, Tom. I love you. Hey, did it, somebody already asked for the girl next door, $500? Yes, someone asked for it and got it. Oh, crap. That's it. Hey. You have to dial faster. Can you take me out Kobe style? Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. This is so special to me. Oh. You hear beats in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. This is so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, Henry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Pretty Last good. First listener, first time caller. Thank you, Henry. You know, I just wanted to say, it's not a big deal that Kurt Cobain uh, anniversary, the 10th anniversary thing. You know what? He, he was a drug addict just like I'm a drug addict. And you know what? If you don't stay sober and, and stay in recovery, we end up dead or in jail. Yep. He chose to take the other path. Yeah, not a lot of 70-year-old heroin addicts out there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you know, he's he's lucky he's made it as far as he did. And as for his uh, love of his life, uh, Courtney Love there, she, does have, she doesn't, doesn't have any talent herself. She, she's living up his name. Well, that's all I got to say. There are people who feel that way. Here you go, Henry. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Brian from Olympia. Yeah. I wanted to uh, let you know I grew up about 30 minutes away from his hometown, the uh, Aberdeen Hokiam area, and I think the guy's a uh, white trash piece of garbage, and I just I don't get it. I think... Uh, not only should you blow me up, but I think you should blow up all those people that uh, are Cobain fans. They drive me nuts. Uh, blow up all the Cobain fans? All right, here you go. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, big man? Uh, doing okay, pal. All right. Hey, first off is I think the uh, whole Kurtz death thing may have been a homicide possibly because it's been in the eyes of the media for quite some time. Nobody has ever proven that. You know what I'm saying? A nobody. Nobody's proven it, but it's, you know, again, Come theorized all over the place. Yeah, well, I don't care what's theorized all over the place. Who, you know what? There's no, I, for me, I need evidence. That's why I'm an atheist. Yeah, of course. Show me the money, you know? The other thing is... I believe more toward the uh, suicide part anyway of it because he had so many indications that he hated himself. He had a song called I Hate Myself and I Want to Die. Right. For one, you know. And he finally succeeded. Oh my God. Give the guy credit. He set out to do something and he went out and did it, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Ryan. All right, man. Well, hey, I just wanted to call and say that uh, I guess the one thing that I would want to say is uh, Kurt Cobain, uh, when I really got into his music when I was about 12, 13, 14 years old, um, really inspired me to like pick up an instrument and play which i still do today every day uh got me into really good music like tool and stuff like that but uh but yeah you're right now that i look back you know i mean he's just a junkie who shot himself and it, he wasn't even any good really at playing well so. uh, you know people will debate that but here's the deal you know it's one thing to uh love people and revere people who are great artists who died before their time because of reasons beyond their control. Uh, yeah. Kurt Cobain right. bought the shotgun, put it to his head, and went blam. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel the same way about um, guys that musically uh, really inspire, like Jimi Hendrix. You know, I think they did the same thing. It was just yeah. with a different, you know, different option. They did it with a needle or whatever. Right. So it's kind of hard to respect that, other than their musical talent, which, uh, which you know, I still enjoy that. But yeah, I can't, I can't look up to those people as human beings. Yeah, uh, and you know what? He 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 did what he wanted to do. He's gone now. How about we move on? Yeah, or well, I have. Why are we staying locked in 1994? Why? Oh, well, well, I'm not anymore. I uh, yeah, I have now, but uh, I do got to say though that uh, that band in particular inspired myself and a lot of friends to pick up instruments. So I got to give him credit for that. There you go. So, but yeah, as a human, can't you know I can't really give him any credit for that. But that's all I want to say. Blow me up. Here you go, Ryan. Five eight hundred Tom Jake on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Jake. I gotta tell you, being a dork myself. No time left for this first time. We love that. Thank you very much. How you doing today? Uh, do you care, Jake? Well, you know, I gotta say on a scale of one to ten, I give it a three point four. <laughs> yes, I do. There we go. I'm doing great. Thank you. Well, I got to call and let you know that I absolutely do agree with you about the Kurt Cobain deal. I obviously live up here in Seattle. I was going to music school when he did uh, shoot himself, and my guitar instructor comes walking into the classroom with a big, big old pale face, and he goes, class, I just got to tell you something, and uh, it's going to break all your hearts, blah, blah, blah. He told us that he killed himself, and the first words out of my mouth was, who cares? Yeah. Because the fact is that it was a very selfish act, and he really screwed up a lot of other kids' lives. A lot of people that looked up to him. Not to mention you know. the few who killed themselves after he killed himself. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. But my main reason for calling in was just for clarification. i got to split hairs with you, Tom. Hendrix didn't OD on heroin. That's not how he died. He died because of asphyxiation from cho uh, choking on his own vomit after drinking too much red wine and... Uh, taking a couple of sleeping pills. Now, of course, I sleeping know. Sleeping pills are drugs. Absolutely. And, it's, and mixing drugs and alcohol is dying from drugs. That's what it is. Absolutely. Like myself, I smoke the bowl once in a while, and I also have a few drinks. I'm sure that you've done whatever you did in your past. But, you know, of course, back in the 60s, before my time, so I'm not going to make anything up there, well, I'm sure didn't smoke a bowl or take acid or uh, or drink, saying, I am now wanting to die today. Unfortunately, I think that he just parked too hard and just it got... I would say, you know what, I don't care what people say. Anybody who boozes heavily and then adds sleeping pills, they're uh -huh. not admitting it. They don't even have the guts to admit they want to die. You know what, I, one thing I admire Kurt Cobain for, he wanted to die. He got the shotgun, he pressed it against his temple, he blew his brains out. That's what he wanted to do. These people who can't even, they don't even have the balls to kill themselves. And so they, uh, they, they feel like they've left themselves an escape hatch. Well, I didn't overdose on drugs. I accidentally uh, drank yeah, but, and but, come on. But, Tom, your argument is flawed in the sense that you're saying that you understand what their intent was at the time that they took the drug. And I do believe if you drink heavily and then add sleeping pills to the mix... That's your intent. You're just not admitting it. You're not being honest about it. Well, any time that you and your buddies go out drinking tough, are you saying that you possibly want to die? I don't alcohol? add OxyContin or other sleeping pills. I don't add uh, uh, the Wellbutrin or Zoloft or yeah. Vicodin or anything like that to the mix. Since I am splitting the hairs and the whole reason why I'm calling up, blah, 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 is that Anybody can OD on drink and alcohol. That means that you puke. How often and does you, that happen? Really? Well, anytime, anytime that you drink heavily and you puke, that means your body couldn't take the inhale. But even time. then, even if you're puking, you're not dead. But you're ODing because your body can't take the... Get, Grant, I'll drink. tell you something. I'll tell you something. Somebody who drinks to the point of alcohol poisoning, I do think they're trying to kill themselves and they don't have the guts to admit it. So you think that some new kid right into college who's never been binge drinking is then thrown into a fraternity and pounds a fifth of whiskey is looking to die? Uh, you know what? I do. I yeah. do. I really do. I you really do. I, and I think they don't have the guts to admit it. Ever happen? You don't think that accidents ever happen? Oh, I'm not saying that they never happen, but I'm saying nine times out of ten. That, that That is what is happening. It is somebody who is trying to destroy themselves. I, by the way, believe the same thing about people who weigh 400 pounds or more. Those people don't have the guts to take a gun and blow their brains out. They what? don't. So they, they, they kill themselves by putting a fork to their head. 
Well, that's a slower death. Jeez, well, I got to taste better than lead. Well, and then they can say, well, I was nourishing myself. I, I'm, a big, I'm a growing boy. I'm eating. But in reality, you're just trying to kill yourself. That's all you're doing, and you don't even have the guts to admit it. Well, for the, for the Kurt Cobain, I don't have any, any problems with what you're saying at all because the man literally, like you said, pulled, put the gun up to his head, pulled the trigger. I think that in the 60s with all the partying, a lot of things people just didn't, they didn't know the possibilities, and they just took too much and partied. I I don't think that Hendrix wanted to die. I think he was wanting to party. Don't don't get me wrong, but I think that just a, a bad mistake happened. I, well, I, I, I I think you were in denial, and you I, probably I, feel I the same way about Janis dad. Joplin and others, right? I met Hendrix's dad. I met Noel Redding. I met Mitch Mitchell. I met the Band of Gypsies, and uh, just with talking to them and how they saw Hendrix at the time and how he was he wasn't looking to die he had just gotten away from uh, the experience and just opened up the um, electric ladyland studios in new york and just finished doing the band of gypsies and was going to come out with a double album first raise the new rising sun he didn't have any reason to kill well, himself i think i think I, I you know what i think people who uh, want to live live healthier lives than that tom like us 1-800-5800-tom 1-800-5800-866 you're so not nice. I'm just honest. I know. I love you for it. The Tom Like It Show. On the Tom Like It Show brought to you in part by The Girl Next Door in theaters this Friday. The Girl Next Door providing $500 in cash. We just uh, gave that away to a random caller this hour. $500 in cash. Keep listening. We'll do it again another hour. From the girl next door, the ultimate guy fantasy starring Alicia Cuthbert from 24 in theaters Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. The uh, 10th anniversary of the death of Kurt Cobain. Should we be making a big deal about some guy who blew his own brains out? Hey, come on! Let's say hi here to uh, Randall on the Tom Likas show. What's up, Tom? Not much, Randall. You're the man, dog. You're the man. Thank you. I just had a quick uh, observation about you, yourself, the man. I, I think you're kind of like Kurt Cobain yourself, you know what I mean? How so? Well, you're influencing a whole bunch of guys, you know. You're not exactly looked upon as, from the rest of society, as a uh, you know, well-respected guy. For not what at you all. Do. Uh, no one has any respect for me except my followers. That's right. <laughs> Which I am one of. Thank you. you know? And uh, and uh, I think Kurt had the kind of same kind of feel. Like he didn't get very much respect from the other people, but he had a tight knit group who followed him. That's right. Except the difference between me and Kurt Cobain. I love making all this money, being successful, and I'm not going to blow my brains out because I want to see how it all turns out. Well, I feel that. I feel that definitely, man. I'll be here. Well, you know what? Another thing I want to tell you is I'm dating a LA ten, and I got her to listen to you. I love that. Yeah, and she's sitting right next to me in my car. How great is that? And her self-esteem is so low that she'll even have sex with you. That's great. <laughs> Randall, I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Lynn on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Lynn. Hey, I just wanted to tell you, you keep me entertained every day on my drive home, and I love you. Thank so. you. By the way, I want to welcome all the Seattle Mariners fans who uh, just got an idea of what the rest of the season is going to be like. Uh, thank you for coming back to the Tom Likas Show. Yes, go ahead. Well, I'm not a baseball fan. I am a music fan, and I'm into all that Nirvana stuff. I'm from Seattle. And uh, what I'm, my comment is I just want to know why all these rock stars are complaining about becoming famous, and when they do become famous, then they go and blow themselves up. Yeah, well, because um, they're pretty damn stupid. That's why. Well, yeah, you've got Kurt Cobain, Lynn Staley. We're dealing with the whole thing up here, the radio stations, the TV, MTV last night. It was yeah. just, it's crazy. They they complain about not wanting to become famous. Why the hell do you want to become a rock star? That's right. <laughs> now you know, no doubt about it. I just, I don't get it. Nobody, get it. nobody puts a gun to your head, wink, wink, and forces you to become a rock star. Exactly, and that's what you get in the business for, and if you can't handle it, then it's better for all of us to just get out. Bing, bang, boom. Thank you. Casey on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. I'm uh, I'm just calling to share my opinion about Kurt Cobain. I actually saw him in one of his first shows in L.A. with Nirvana, opening for Mudhoney at the Hollywood Palladium. Yeah. 
And I thought he was the coolest guy at the time when I was in high school in, like, 1991 or 92. And since then, my little sister, who is 14, I'm 29 now, she has posters of him all over her wall. Meanwhile, she was all of four years old when he killed himself. And I'm thinking, what kind of a role model is this? A man who is so depressed that he kills himself, yet my little sister reveres him. I yep. think it's pathetic. I, it's a sign of trouble, I think. It's it's awful. I mean, and the fact that, that you know, the, the group and the record labels are profiting on his death, you know, re-releasing things and magazines are putting his picture all well, over Well, they can the only profit because there's a willing audience marching like lemmings out to the record store or uh, wherever to go pick up these uh, CDs. It's disgusting. I mean, this man had a mental illness that went untreated and... It's very, very sad. I mean, I feel very, very sad for him. I mean, I think that he had a disease that he was unable to control. He tried to self-medicate with drugs. And he was even in detox at the time of his death. He escaped from detox of heroin and was probably going through withdrawals. I mean, I'm not giving any excuses for him killing himself, but it's a bad place he was in. And it's just really sad. That's all it is, you know? No, but you know what, though? It's 10 years later. I, I've moved on. I, I don't understand. Well, it's like, okay, guy's depressed, he's too successful, and he can't handle it, and he kills himself. You know what? I got more important things to worry about. Well, I keep thinking of um, when Michael Hutchins killed himself, and then his, his uh, girlfriend slash whatever she was ended up dying, and his poor their poor daughter, Tiger Lily, is living, you know, without parents now because you know they they both couldn't handle being alive right. and could, i wish all of these loons would stop breathing i know it's sad it's disgusting i mean this poor little girl i mean the, the last thing she wants to hear i was reading an article the last thing she wants to hear from anybody is that for them to compare her to her dad i mean he killed himself you know he yeah. didn't want to be a father yeah, how would you like to be the little girl that was born to uh, kirk cobain and courtney love how would you like to be that little girl oh it's sad it's very sad mm -hmm. Well, thanks for letting me speak my piece. Casey, I did it as a public service. Tom Like It. 1 800 5 800 Tom. We'll break it down for me. Tom Like It. 1 800 5 800 866. I had a piece of booty call action in high school. She wanted to hook up, but she got in Crisco on me, man. You know what I'm saying? Fat in the can. The... She got in Crisco on me. I like that. The Tom Like It Show. Tom Like It Show. Go at one 800 800 tom April on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, April. <laughs> I totally got busted by your guy who screens calls. How'd, how'd he bust you? I lied about my age. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, Tom, what is the difference of, let's say, like Janis Joplin, Elvis, um, Jimi Hendrix, just because... Just to me, it's all the same. It's all the same, exactly. My point: they were just taking drugs and abuse the drugs. He right. didn't. They didn't put a gun to their head or mm -hmm. anything like it. But it's all the same. Yes. And it's the ones that get involved in this that are weak, and they just. And plus, it's the fans. It's it's the lifestyle. It's the fans. Mm -hmm. It's everything that goes along with it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Elvis Presley. I, I think of him in the same category right, as Kurt right. Cobain, except much more successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, I mean, I don't feel sorry. I feel sorry for the child, but I don't feel that it was it's a pathetic situation for all of them involved in the drugs and the lifestyle. And it just takes you. It's a spiral staircase. That once you start going down, that's it. No doubt about it. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. April, thank you. Cal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Um, I, I was raised here in Aberdeen and all that. And you know, I met him a couple of times. I was in the band scene. And, and Nova Chelich used to bum cigarettes for me. But anyway, they're trying to get a memorial going down here in Aberdeen. Come on. Taxpayers' money. Oh, come on. I'm not kidding. They haven't figured it out whether they're going to put a statue up or some sort of kids' rehab. Unbelievable. No, it's nuts. Um, I, you know, I had a best friend that killed himself when I was young, uh, you know, 17, and, and I wouldn't even go to his uh, damn funeral because it was just nuts. I mean, the guy was so goddamn selfish. That they should uh, dedicate a shooting range to it. Yeah, I mean, here's a guy, bullseye. He hit it. Uh, well, you know, and we have the highest, highest uh, uh, suicide rate in all of the United States in Grace Harbor. Wow. Nuts. I didn't know it was that bad. 
It is. It is. Uh, it's it's not down a little bit, but geez, that around that time and before that, for like 15 years before him killing himself, <laughs> it's been the highest. You can look up the stats. Uh, I, I imagine you can. Brad on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how are you, Tom? Okay, Brad. Good, thanks. Uh, listen, I just wanted to give you my comments on Kurt Cobain, and uh, and if you don't like him, just please go ahead and let me know. Um, this is this is the way I feel about it. Kurt Cobain and Nirvana, you got to give them credit because let's face it, without Nirvana, we probably would still be uh, listening to hair metal, wearing tight jeans, and we'd all still have. Bands. No, heavy metal uh, and the hair bands that was dead by the time Nirvana came along. Anyway, it was dead on Nirvana dead of its own weight. In the coffin. I think uh, I think bands, uh, some of those bands still would be around today, or at least still would be bigger today. Than oh, yeah, we'd all be going to see Pantera. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, Pantera, I mean, those guys are still selling out shows. You just don't hear about them because they're in. Yeah, the but their fans are all 50. <laughs> they're pretty damn old, all right. Yeah, no doubt about it. I'm out of time for this hour, Brett. I thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. What?